Here is an interesting question which is typically asked for data scientists and for machine learning roles in many companies. And this question is all about overfitting a support vector machine. Again, this question is on the easier side of questions that you can expect. And the question here is as follows. Imagine that you're given a data set D, which consists of pairs X, I, Y, I, right? Your standard classification setting. Let's assume we are using support vector machines for classification. And let's assume you are given n points as your training data. Let's assume this is your training data. Okay. And let's assume that this data, let's also simplify and assume that it's binary classification. Okay. So your yi's are binary. Your xi is basically your feature vector. Right. Let's also assume that the data given to you is non-linearly separable. And the question that is asked of you is, imagine that you're trying to fit a hard margin SVM. This is not a soft margin SVM. Please note that, okay? So you're trying to fit a hard margin SVM. The question here is, given a data set like this, wherein you're trying to perform binary classification, and given that the data is non-linearly separable, how do you overfit a hard margin SVM? That's the question. Again, this question is surely on the easier end of the spectrum of questions that you can expect, okay? Because it's all about how do you overfit a specific model? Of course, couple of couple of details given here are that it's a hard margin SVM, not a soft margin SVM, and the data is non-linearly separable. That's all. Those are the two subtle hints given to you. So I would like you to pause this video now and think about answering this question on your own before checking the rest of the video where I'll explain the solution. Okay. So let's dive in. First of all, one fact given to us is a hard margin SVM. The second fact given to us is a non-linear separable data. Because you have non-linear separable data, a linear SVM won't cut. So you will have to use a kernel SVM. So the first hint, because the data is non-linearly separable and you want to overfit to this data. So what you need to use is a kernel SVM. What kernel? We will see that in a couple of minutes. Okay. And it's also given to you that it's a hard margin SVM. So if you look at the mathematical formulation of hard margin SVM, right? So you don't have any hinge loss term. You don't have any term here. So typically you have the hinge loss term here, right? In a soft SVM. You don't have any of that in a hard margin SVM. All you're trying to do is you're trying to maximize this margin. So what is your margin in SVM? This is your margin, right? This is your margin. So you're trying to maximize margin or in other words, you're trying to minimize the inverse of margin such that all the points are on the appropriate sides of the hyperplanes. Okay, yi w transpose xi plus b is greater than or equal to 1 for all points i. For all i, this has to be true. That's what is your hard margin SVM. Imagine if this was a soft margin SVM, you could fine tune this parameter c here, right, to overfit or underfit. If it was, a, I mean, if the question said soft margin SVM, typically what people say here is, we have this parameter c here. Again, Depends on how you write mathematically. Some people place this hyperparameter C here. Some people place a lambda here, depending on whichever, whichever you use. You will have this hyperparameter C in the case of a soft margin. And by increasing C or by reducing C, you can either overfit or underfit. But in a hard margin SVM, you don't have any of this term here. Right? You don't have any of this uh, uh, hinge loss term here. You're trying to just maximize the margin or minimize the inverse of the margin such that all points are correctly classified. So you can't say, I'll change. So some people uh, mistakenly say, hey, I'll play around with this hyperparameter C. You don't have that hyperparameter in a hard margin SVM. Note that, right? So this is your formulation. What are hyperparameters do you have here? Because one way to overfit or underfit is to play with your hyperparameters, right? So there is no hyperparameter. You're, you're trying to minimize with respect to W and B, obviously. So there is no hyperparameter that you see here. This is just your margin, right? So there is no hyperparameter that you see here that you can that you can tinker to either overfit or underfit. So which means, and what is, what is a task at hand? A task at hand is to use a hard margin SVM. I don't have any hyperparameters to play with. So the next thing that I should look at is my kernel, right? Kernels have hyperparameters that I can play with. And if you recall, one of the one of the most powerful and widely used kernels for nonlinear separable data. We are not given any other properties about this nonlinearly separable data. We are not told that it's concentric circles or anything like that. So if you don't know 
the properties of the non-linearly separable data just using a radial basis function kernel is, is a very popular choice and it also works fairly well in practice. Right? You will not be using a polynomial kernel or any of those kernels. An RBF kernel is a much more generic kernel that works well on non-linearly separable data. So, okay. So we decide, okay, so we're going to use a hard margin SVM. No hyperparameters in this primal formulation itself. So let's let's dive into RBF kernel. So how does the RBF kernel look like? So if you have two points x1 and x2, the RBF kernel is basically e power minus the distance squared between both these points. This is basically your Euclidean distance squared divided by 2 sigma squared, right? Again, some of you might have learned with this notation where you have gamma equals to 1 by 2 sigma square, right? So this 1 by 2 sigma square is often read as gamma. It is also referred to as scale of the RBF kernel. Like if, if, you're, if you're familiar with scikit-learn, one of the notations they use is they don't use this notation with sigma when you write uh, code in sklearn. They use the gamma as the hyperparameter. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I'll talk in terms of sigma, but the same interpretation can be made in terms of gamma also. If you are familiar with this notation. In this notation, what happens? It is minus gamma into the Euclidean distance squared. So 1 by 2 sigma squared is replaced by gamma. Okay, so now in an RBF kernel, what are the hyperparameters that we can play with? The biggest hyperparameter we have is the sigma here. This sigma is a hyperparameter that we can play with. Right? This is a hyperparameter that we can play with to either overfit or underfit. Right? Now, what happens if this sigma is small? So, if I reduce this sigma, okay, I, I use this arrow mark to symbolize that we are reducing the sigma. Right? If you reduce the sigma, what happens? Intuitively, this, this RBF kernel, if you plot it, if you plot it like this, your RBF kernel itself becomes narrower and narrower which means only points which are very close together will be treated as similar points. Because what is a kernel at its very core? Kernel is basically a similarity measuring function, right? If your sigma is very small, then only points which are very close to each other. If the distance between x1 and x2 is very small, only then they'll be treated as similar points. And as sigma reduces, again, we've discussed this in lots of detail in our course videos also. As sigma reduces, you tend to overfit the model. To the given data. As sigma increases, what happens? As sigma increases, farther and farther points. So if you look at this, x1 minus x2, farther and farther points also because the width of this kernel is more, right? So even farther and farther points will be treated as being similar. So if, if, if the sigma is larger, then you will underfit the model. If the sigma is smaller, you will overfit the model. So what is our task at hand? Our task at hand here is how do you overfit an SVM, given that we have to use a hard margin SVM on non-linearly separable data. So in a hard margin SVM, we don't have this hyperparameter C that we can play with. We don't have this C, right? So what, what are the hyperparameters we have? It is only the kernel hyperparameters that we have. Given that we know that the data is non-linearly separable, we should immediately come to the conclusion that we want to use a kernel SVM and that too an RBF kernel SVM. And as soon as you arrive at the fact that we have to use the RBF kernel SVM, you can see that the RBF kernel SVM has the sigma. So to overfit, given our requirements, we simply use an RBF kernel SVM with a small value of sigma to overfit on this problem. Again, these types of interview questions try to test your deeper understanding of the concept. They try to understand whether, 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 you, whether you really, really understand the hard margin SVM do you understand the differences between hard margin and soft margin SVM? Do you understand about the RBF kernel? Do you understand about the hyperparameters in the RBF kernel? Do you understand how to overfit an RBF kernel SVM? Again, this question is not hard. If you know the basic foundations of SVM, if you know the basic mathematical formulation of hard and soft margin SVM, if you know the mathematics underlying RBF kernel, this is a fairly straightforward question. 